Hi, Moglets. So I just got done watching this special program, and man, there are some really exciting things in here. Navia and Chevrolet are cool and all, but it's actually something besides them. Though they also look interesting, we're going to talk about them as well, of course. But yeah, you'll see in a little bit here. We've been watching the trailer here in the background. It's definitely very like theater themed, I would say. Very light and casual vibes. Also, redemption codes down there in the pinned comment if you haven't redeemed them yet. But yeah, apparently both Navia and Chevrus are like gun characters. I'm pretty sure these are the first two characters that like use guns. Chevrus is a lot more obviously using a gun. She's literally holding a musket there. But Navia has a gunbrella. I forgot what they called it exactly. But yeah, actually moving on to Navia and talking a bit about her. As usual with the recent special programs, they don't go into a ton of detail for her, but we can get a general idea about her kit. First of all, she is a Geo character and technically wields a Claymore, but it is apparently supposed to be a gun. Her kit kind of revolves around one of the worst reactions in the game, which is Crystallize. But basically, as Crystallize happens and these shards pop on the ground and you pick them up, she'll gain some special stacks. When she does her elemental skill, depending on how many stacks she has, her skill will become stronger. Regardless though, it seems like her attack pierces enemies. Pretty cool to see enemy piercing attacks. And then after using her elemental skill, her normal charge attacks will be imbued with Geo. So definitely shaping up to be a main DPS. Her ultimate is basically what appears to be a long lasting AOE geo attack that just rains down these boulders she can also get these same skill stacks that she gets with the crystallize shards with her ultimate if her ultimate is hitting enemies while i don't have enough details to say anything concrete right now my sort of first impressions is that she's not going to be a super meta unit she does look really interesting though i mean if the whole point of a navia team is to create crystallize to empower her skill and her damage you definitely shouldn't need a shielder i really like ito and my ito team being a geo claymore main dps they do share some similarities moving on to chevrus the four star of the patch she very much more obviously wields a gun but technically she is a pyro pull arm user. She kind of comes off as a sub DPS, but can also heal. I guess kind of similar to Charlotte, but her being pyro is just generally more interesting for meta purposes. But yeah, basically she just fires a shot with her skill. You can hold it to go into aiming mode. And then after she fires her skill, the active character will get healed. So you can swap out to someone else and they will get healed instead. They do say for a short duration. So it could be like six seconds, maybe even less. Her burst is an AOE pyro attack, kind of like Klee's jumpy bumpties. Dumpties, I don't know. There'll be an initial explosion, and then a circle of bombs that'll also explode. But also, Chevrus focuses on one specific elemental reaction like Navia. In her case, that's overloaded pyro and electro. Firstly, when doing overloaded, she'll get a special stack here. When you have this special stack, her held elemental skill will be stronger and have a bigger AOE. And after you do that, everyone in the team who is electro or pyro, again, overloaded, will get an attack buff. And finally, Chevrus is kind of like the Nilu for Bloom teams, where if you only have electros and pyros in your team and at least one of each, triggering overloaded on an enemy will reduce its electro and pyro resistance. I've personally never been huge on overloaded teams. I've tried them here and there. I find the enemies bouncing around to be a little annoying sometimes, but it can definitely be a strong reaction. And with a solid like Electro or Pyro DPS in the team, it could do some pretty interesting things. So I'm looking forward to trying her out as well. Taking a look at the banners, we have Navia and Ayaka coming up first. Ayaka is definitely pretty strong at high constellation, but as Navia is the new one, it's pretty obvious who I'm going for. Also new Claymore, of course, Navia's signature weapon. Honestly looks super nice. It is more of an axe or a halberd than a claymore, but I'm not complaining. It looks really cool. I love how it's just called Verdict as well. Like a lot of the recent weapon names have been like a, a whole sentence. <laughs> anyway, phase two features Shogun and Yoimiya. I really love Yoimiya. I actually love Shogun as well, but she is C6 already. My one and only C6 exclusive, which is super sad because her C6 kind of sucks. I probably wouldn't summon on either banner if it wasn't for Chevrus, but I do want to check her out as well. So uh, Yoimiya for sure it is. New artifacts. It's so sad they don't give us a description of what they actually do this time. I really love going over new artifact sets and you know, who they could be good for, but they just don't say anything here. Apparently there will be an announcement later and maybe I'll make a short video about it or something. Moving on to events, we have roses and muskets along with some uh, special event items. The Ultimate Overlord's Mega Magic Sword. See, those are the weapon names I am uh, expecting. And then also Super Duper Invincible Shining Sparkly Magic Crystal. I'm not sure exactly what that is. It might just be a gadget. But yeah, roses and muskets is the main event of version 4.3. A couple of very different events than I've seen. The first one here, you're basically a sniper. 
which is cool. Kind of like target practice on those poor hella churls. I almost felt bad watching them just get sniped. Next one's more of a combat event where you use special lighting effects to give yourself buffs. Next, we have a sort of sheep herding mini game, which it appears can be played in co-op. Almost seems competitive in a way because uh, each four of the players have their own goals to uh, herd the, they're not sheep, but you can see what's going on there. And the last part of the event seems to not be photography this time, but videography, which is definitely a twist on it. Next we have Arataki Blazing Armor Beetle Battle Boot Camp. Quite a fun thing to say, try it yourself. We've had a beetle battle event very similar to this in the past. The main difference here is that you can actually guard against some specific attacks. So there's a little bit more control there. Next up we got Lost Riches coming back, chance to get a waterproof Sealy. As it was with all other events, it is essentially a treasure hunt. You go around getting these coins and then you can trade the coins for a Sealy. Little equipable dude, it doesn't really do anything but it looks kinda cool. Dance of Resolute Will is a combat event. There'll be two rounds, the sort of little twist here is that one character has to be in both rounds and the other three characters cannot be. So you basically need seven different characters and one character that fits in both teams. Pretty cool, I mean, there are definitely some times in Abyss where I wish I could have one character in, on both sides, so kind of an advantage, honestly. Lieben's coming back, trade items for Primo Gems. Most people know Lieben's deal by now. <laughs> TCG update, we got some new Fontaine challenges and some new cards. And finally, the thing you've all been waiting for, system optimizations. This is the thing I I'm legitimately excited for with uh, version 4.3. Why I'm excited for system optimizations just doesn't have the same ring to it, you know? But yeah, um, there's some really cool stuff in here. Starting with artifact interface optimizations, there'll be artifact set recommendations for each character. Honestly, I think this is good, but I don't know how helpful it's actually going to be and in some cases it could even be hurtful because there's a lot of missing context. Different sets will be good for different situations and different teams even on the same character. So when you see a screen pop up and, and it says 60% of players have this character in this artifact set, you're like, well, it must be the best artifact set, but that's not always the case. I'd say in a lot of cases it will be somewhat accurate, but it's something you should take with a grain of salt. There's also something really cool, but I'll probably never use. There's like an automatic locking function where you can set specific criteria area for an artifact to have and then it will auto lock it and if it doesn't have those criteria it won't lock it. The reason I'm a little hesitant to even use this is because when I'm going through artifacts to discard either through the strong box or to level up a different artifact it's getting really hard because you see this piece and it's like okay it doesn't have the best substats but maybe for this one specific character it could be good for them or like an off piece. So it's like how can you put specific requirements for it to be locked when there are so many specific things that could be good and the chance of an actually perfect artifact dropping is so low. If you actually go for that, you're never gonna lock any artifacts and you may as well not even touch it, you know? I just feel like there are way too many variables now, too many characters, too many sets, too many different like situations where, you know, a not perfect seeming artifact could be perfect for someone and then there's off pieces as well. It's just way too much to actually decide. I think with this feature, the cooler thing actually is the bulk unlock. Back in my early days, I locked pretty much all my five stars because it's like, damn, they're so rare and they're so hard to get. Nowadays, they're all kind of crap and it's really annoying to have to go and unlock all of them. So what I'm probably gonna do is, as soon as this drops, unlock every single artifact and actually start cleaning up my inventory. <laughs> There's also some extra and pretty interesting filtering going on here as well. So as you can see from this screen, you select a specific set here, in this case, 200 of uh, Gladiator's Finale, and then you can sort by locked or unlocked, max level or not max level, and then equipped or not equipped. So you have a lot more sorting control, which is really nice for me in particular that has like 1200 five star artifacts that I can't really decide if I wanna throw away or not, this should make it easier. Artifact enhancement screen has also gotten better. We can add more enhancement materials at once. And one of the coolest things about this new artifact update is you could see when it actually goes to plus seven there, there's not a pop-up window. It just says plus seven up there. Thank you. You have no idea how annoying it is to have to close that pop-up every single time. I mean, of course you do. You also play Genshin probably. <laughs> it doesn't tell you it got to plus four. It just, there's, okay. I'm done, but that's the best thing ever. <laughs> no, actually there is something even better coming. Hold on. And these pop-ups are not just for artifacts either. They're for character ascension, weapon, you know, everything where you're leveling something up. It's not gonna give you a pop-up every single time you raise one single level anymore. 
oh my god, that's amazing. <laughs> I can't get over that. It's such a little thing, but after thousands of hours and thousands of things raised, it adds up and it becomes so annoying after a while. Also, this is something I missed the first time watching it, but you can go from R1 to R5 on a weapon, very much like Star Rail. You can just add all four of them instead of having to add one at a time. Very cool. Not something you're gonna do super often, but still. All right, this is the best one. This is the best system optimization. Again, it's one of those tiny things. Bones was literally complaining about this the other day. Like, why do you have to run so far every time you repeat a domain? They fixed it. They fixed it. When you repeat a domain, you're just standing right there next to the key, a few steps away. It's amazing. It's so cool. I know I'm getting so unnecessarily hype about this, but it's like, these are the things that matter. Look, you're just right there. You're so close to just starting a new one right there. If I understand everything correctly, there are some chasm quests that you have to do before continuing the Archon quests. And this will essentially allow you to skip those chasm quests and go straight onto the Archon quest. I've done all of that already, so it doesn't affect me, but it should make it a bit smoother of a flow for other people that haven't reached that point yet. Next up, another really cool quality of life thing, one click expeditions. Another one of those things you gotta do every single day, just got a little bit less annoying. You can just claim all your rewards and then hit the dispatch again button and boom, done. Something that used to take 30 seconds now takes five seconds. I know it sounds ridiculous, but when you do it every day, it's just an annoying thing, you know? Also forged items or recipes or things, you can also just claim everything with a single click. There are some other optimizations they only mentioned and didn't show, like enemy tracking from the Adventure Handbook being better, which is something I use a lot as well, so that's cool. Character selection logic when crafting and foraging, so there are some specific characters that give buffs when you are doing certain things like upgrading enemy mats or whatever, and it'll, I guess, pick the right character for that without you having to go into the menu and select them. Besides that, we got a new Fontaine Realm layout for the Serena Teapot. And besides this very cool and impressive concert they sometimes have at the end of their special programs, that was essentially it. If I'm perfectly honest, I am literally looking forward to the system optimizations more than the new characters. I know that sounds weird, but as a player that's been playing since launch, all those things we have to do at least consistently, like raising artifacts or even daily, like expeditions and running domains, that's great. I'm literally actually so hyped just to go and go out and tell Bones about it. <laughs> but yeah, let me know what you think about version 4.3 in the comments down below. Leaving a like or subscribing to the channel if you enjoyed is always greatly appreciated as well. Thanks, as always, for watching, and until next time.